have a seat you have. Alma. Alma. Y'all take your Bibles if you would. Do you hear a lot about um, <coughs> about the third temple? The third what? The third temple. Is it this temple or temple? Temple. 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 Um, it's a big deal. The third temple. And reason uh, I focus on this. I started working on it Monday, as a matter of fact. Uh, one of the young people asked about it. What's the third temple? He heard something about it. He didn't know. I thought, well, I'll just do a devotion on it, and that way we'll look all the, look at the scriptures. Uh, so I have a lot of reference work here, and I, if you want to just listen, that's fine. If you want to jot them down, that's fine. If you want to turn to them, that's fine. I'll take just a little bit of time between the two uh, if you want to turn to them. But... Um, we kind of lay a little bit of uh, background to the Temple Mount. Some possibilities there. So to begin with, uh, Genesis 22.1 with Abraham. This is where God sends Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac. And we learn there the name of the um, the place where he sent him. Now he was in <coughs> Beersheba, which is in the southern part of uh, Israel. And probably about 40 or so miles to the north is Jerusalem. And it was called the land of Moriah. And so Genesis 22, 1, it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. He was testing him. Said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And so we know that's where that took place. You know what happened? He goes up there. He gets ready to sacrifice Isaac. And God said, Wait, 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 don't do it. Give him the ram, you know, he did the ram. Okay? So that was in the land of Moriah to the mountain where God told him to. All right, 1 Chronicles 21 6. Um, David, you know, when he was uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant, was uh, he was wanting to build uh, God a temple, and God said, No, I don't you do that. And uh, it's the, the episode where David numbers the, uh, the soldiers, you know, throughout the land and finds out how many soldiers they have. And, of course, God plagues the land of Israel and they lose thousands of people in the plague. And so uh, this is that area. Uh, when that was over, it says uh, 1 Chronicles 21, 26, David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and a call upon the Lord and he answered them from heaven by fire upon the altar of the burnt offering. In verse 28, when David saw that the Lord had answered him in the threshing floor of Ornon the Jebusite. So this was uh, the place where that was. Threshing floor, Ornon the Jebusite. 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1. Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem. And it says there in Mount Moriah. 
where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornon the Jebusite. He began to build on the second day of the second month of the fourth year of his reign. All right. So there are those that say, I don't know for 100% sure myself, that the very spot where Abraham was going to offer Isaac is the very spot, Mount Moriah, where the temple that Solomon built was built. Same spot. God uh, sent the ram there. God sent the fire and consumed David's offering there. God, um, when Solomon offered offerings there, when they were dedicating the temple, God sent fire from heaven and consumed the offering. You read that farther on over there. Um, that's 2 Chronicles 7, verse 1. Solomon made an end of praying, and fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house, and the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. So when the new temple was built, it took them seven years. They got the temple built. Remember, it was made out of gold. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. They, they dedicated it. Eleven months later, they waited to one of the serum feasts that they had to get Feast of whichever one it was. And, and they had the ceremony and they had the offerings and fire came from heaven. Can you imagine? But anyway, I said all that to say this took place, the, the first temple. This is the first temple. This first temple was completed. Took seven years and six months. It was completed <clears throat> it began in May of 966 B.C. is when it began. And it was completed in November of 959 B.C. <coughs> November of 959 B.C. This is according to my MacArthur Study Bible. 959 B.C. is when the first temple was completed. It was built by Solomon, David's son. All right? The first temple was destroyed, right? And I've preached on this so many times, you may remember. 586 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar, okay? Uh, this is the study Bible says the siege began January 15, 588 B.C. And endure, it ended, lasted two years, it ended July the 18th, 586 B.C., Babylon's destruction began August the 14th, 586 B.C. 2 Kings 25, 8 and 9. And uh, so that first temple lasted for 373 years. It was built by Solomon, completed in 959 B.C., lasted 373 years, and God brought it to an end. Jeremiah 52, 12, fifth month of the fourth day of the month, which was the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, uh, came the captain of the guard, which served the king of Babylon into Jerusalem, and he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem and all the houses of the great men, burned he with fire, and all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard break down all the walls of Jerusalem round about. So we have the first temple built. We have the first temple destroyed. Okay. They had a 70-year span of time before they were allowed to go back to Jerusalem. You remember? Um, so we have the second temple when they go back. Uh, this is the uh, footnote, Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. The historian Josephus rec uh, records an account of the day when Daniel read Isaiah's prophecy to Cyrus. And in response, he was moved to declare the proclamation of Ezra chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, 538 B.C. All right. So now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, this is Ezra chapter 1, verse 1. That the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah the prophet might be fulfilled. The Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom 
and put it also in writing, saying, Thus said Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is Judah. All right? So, the MacArthur Study Bible says, Adar, sixth year, the twelfth month, February, March of 516 B.C. The second temple is completed. So they make their trek back a thousand miles or so, get to go home after 70 years. They get started building the uh, uh, the second temple, rebuilding the temple, after Nebuchadnezzar had torn it all down. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14, the elders of the Jews built it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edu. And you can read Haggai and Zechariah and look at what they said. They built it and finished it according to the commandment of God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. All right? So that is 516, February and March of 516 B.C. The second temple is completed. Right? So we have the second temple destroyed. That is Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. If you're interested, Jesus mentions that. It says, when Jesus went out and departed from the temple, his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Talking about that temple, the second temple. Um, that temple, um, Luke chapter 19, verse 41 says, and when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. This is Jesus. Saying, if thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thy eyes, for the days shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. This is Jesus. He's prophesying and saying, this city is going down. This temple is going down. What happened? 70 AD, this, the second temple went down. So from 516 B.C. to 70 A.D., the second temple lasted 586 years. It was magnificent. It wasn't as magnificent as the first temple, but it was magnificent. Um, I, I pulled up a, uh, a clip on this, and you, you can read all you want to about it. There's plenty to read on uh, Titus when they came in and destroyed the temple. In Jerusalem in 70 A.D. Uh, here's what I, two or three paragraphs here. By the year 70, and it had been going on for several years, you had uh, the Jewish people were revolting against Rome. Yeah. You read all about the Roman Empire. And you had these, uh, these groups that would rise up to, to fight against them. And Rome got sick of it. Yeah. So... Uh, by the year 70 A.D., the attackers had breached Jerusalem's outer walls and began a systematic ransacking of the city. The assault culminated in the burning and disruption of the temple that served as the center of Judaism. In victory, the Romans slaughtered thousands. Of those spared from death, thousands more were enslaved and sent to toil in the mines of Egypt. Others were dispersed to arenas throughout the empire to be butchered for the amusement of the public. Most of the slain were peaceful citizens, weak and unarmed, and they were butchered where they were caught. The heap of corpses mounted higher and higher 
about the altar, a stream of blood flowed down the temple steps, and the bodies of those slain at the top slipped to the bottom. Caesar entered the building with his generals and looked at the holy place of the sanctuary and all its furnishings, with exceeded, which exceeded by far the accounts current in foreign lands and fully justified their splendid repute in our own. The Temple Mount, everywhere enveloped in flames, seemed to be boiling over from its base, yet the blood seemed more abundant than the flames and the numbers of the slain greater than those of the slayers. The soldiers climbed over heaps of the bodies as they chased the fugitives. There are reports of 1.1 million Jews killed that during that time. Can you imagine? 1.1 million dead people in one place. Can you imagine? But Rome was absolutely sick of dealing with them. And that's when the second temple was destroyed. Okay, okay so now we come to the third temple. End time prophecy speaks of a sanctuary. There's not a temple in Jerusalem now. There's the Dome of the Rock, but there's not a Jewish temple. End time prophecy speaks of a sanctuary. Because of the prophecy, it is understood that it will be built. Okay? There's no temple now, but the prophecy speaks of a temple. Therefore, we understand that a temple will be built, the third temple. Okay. Uh, here's a quote said, we need to understand the prophetic necessity of a third temple even before the destruction of the second. The prophecy about the temple being destroyed was between the first and the second temple. So when they saw the prophecy about the sanctuary, the second temple hadn't even been rebuilt yet. And so I imagine Daniel, when it talked, to, when the angel was talking about the sanctuary, Daniel's thinking, I don't get this, because the temple was destroyed. And you're talking about the temple. Well, the second one was built, the second one was destroyed, and we're still waiting on this stuff to happen in the temple. So we're waiting on the third temple to be built. You see, see that the uh, significance of the third temple. They, you can pull up. They have everything ready to build it. They're just waiting for that time. And when it happens, it'll be quick. They've got it all laid out. Everything's ready. All the plans are done. They're actually searching out the uh, the proper bloodline of the heifers to sacrifice and all this stuff. When it happens, it's going to happen. But that's the third temple. All right. <clears throat> Jesus says, well, first of all, Daniel 9, 26 and 27 speaks of a temple uh, in the prophecy. And at that time, there wasn't a temple. It was between the first and second. Daniel 11.31 speaks of a temple. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 3, speaks of a temple in the last days. I'm going to read that one to you. It says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God or that is worshipped, so, excuse me, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And so this is prophecy about things that are taking place right before Jesus comes back. So when we see that temple built, and we will. It won't be too many, too much longer. When we see that temple be built, we will know at that time that we're getting really close.
to the second coming of Jesus Christ and the end of the age. The dawning in of the new age. The new era that's coming after this one. Right? That is... Um, St. Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3. Um, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 15 beginning there and uh, then skipping down to 21 and 22. Jesus um, refers to that same time that Paul was referring to in that temple that's not built yet. Jesus mentions in Matthew chapter 24 beginning in verse 15 when they therefore see, shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Verse 21, then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world of this time, no nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So Jesus puts the prophecy of Daniel about the uh, abomination of desolation that Daniel speaks of, he says when you see that, you can know that we're very close to the end. And when you get to Daniel, and we're going to read that in a minute, he gives us the exact number of days to count up to the second coming of Christ. That will be where we'll know for sure that we're living in the generation of the return of Jesus Christ. When that takes place. When the abomination of desolation is seen in the temple that's going to be built. So when you hear all this stuff about the uh, third temple, and you hear the, the, the articles about the fact that get ready to build and all this, just know that it's very, very, very important according to biblical prophecy. Okay? The third temple. Um, the third temple will be cleansed at the return of Jesus Christ. You have the abomination of desolation that will be there. Um, there was a precursor to this Back with a guy uh, between the first the Old Testament and the New Testament, and you've heard his name, Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes. Uh, he was a precursor that looked forward to this, but that wasn't all the fulfillment of this. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that it's future. When you see this, as Daniel the prophet said, then you can know that. Uh, we're there. You're in the generation of the return of Christ. So Daniel chapter 8, the third temple to be cleansed at the return of Christ. I want to turn there. I jotted something down. This is Daniel chapter 8, verses 13 and 14. And this is interesting. You might want to turn there and, and mark this because it gives us a very specific date that we can know to start counting the days according to prophecy to the return of Christ. All right? Uh, the third temple to be cleansed at the return of Jesus. Daniel 8, 13. Then I heard one, of the, one saint speaking and another saint said unto that certain saint, which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation? That's the uh, uh, transgression of desolation is the abomination of desolation the same thing. To give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Let me read that over because I got myself uh, 
tangled up. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that saint, which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Under two thousand three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. And who's going to do the cleansing of the sanctuary? It's going to be Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, Jesus had the triumphal entry when he cleansed the temple. And what did he say? You're making my father's house a den of thieves, right? He turned over the money changers. He cleansed the temple. And that was a foreshadow of this event that will take place at his second coming. And so it tells us there from the time that they begin sacrificing in that third temple, you can start counting 2,300 days, right? It gives us another date when they stop uh, sacrificing because they'll put a stop to it. And from that point, it's three and a half years. Right? I think the 20... Um, 2,300 days is about six years, eight, uh, three months, something like that. So not long after they signed that treaty in 927, Daniel 927, he shall confirm the covenant with them for one week, that's seven years. In the midst of the week shall he cause a sacrifice, the oblation to cease. Right. So Halfway through, three and a half years, they stop the uh, sacrifices. And just think about it. When they start sacrificing animals in the temple, the third temple at Jerusalem, when it gets built, imagine what anger that's going to do around the world to these animal activists. And the anger that it's going to stir up about the Jewish people and what they're doing. All that's in the mix. Of course, you've got all the other things going on in Revelation it talks about. You know, you're going to have some chaos because of earthquakes and all that stuff that's happening. And all this is taking place. Uh, from the moment you see sacrifices beginning in Jerusalem, you can start counting 2,300 days to the time that the temple is cleansed. We know that Jesus is going to do that at the second coming. Right? Uh, to the end of the age, return of Jesus. Right? If you want to notice there in uh, chapter 12 in Daniel, Verse 11. And it's also in chapter 9, verse 27. From the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away. And the abomination make the desolate set up. There shall be 1,290 days. That's 43 months. So it's one month more than the 42 months. Three and a half years. <clears throat> So this third temple being built and is going to be built, when it happens, we'll know that we're getting close to these prophecies taking place. That's the big deal about the third temple. Okay? And that's why it's so important in Bible prophecy and in uh, all of your, if you get on these websites that follow that kind of stuff, that's what they talk about, the third temple third temple, third, and that's the reason. Because there's so much prophecy that's tied to it. Uh, the third temple will be cleansed at the return of Christ. All right. Uh, I want to read because when Jesus returns, it says in Daniel chapter 7 verse 14, there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which will not be destroyed. So when Jesus Christ returns, right, he's man. 
He's king of the earth. All right? When Jesus Christ returns. It goes along with Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. These are the words of Jesus. <coughs> Jesus says, and we're familiar with this, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Even Jesus mentions it. He will sit on that throne. There's also another talk of another temple in Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12. I wanted to mention that one because it says that Jesus will build a temple when he returns too. I don't know if it's talking about, I just don't know, but I wanted to read it to you because of what it says. It says, Zechariah chapter 6, verse 12, Speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch... He shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit right, and rule upon his throne. So he's going to sit as king and rule upon his throne in the temple. And he shall be a priest upon his throne. <coughs> so he, he will be the king and the priest on the throne ruling the earth. Isn't that powerful? That's powerful stuff. You have a theocracy, you have a government, and you have a religion all in one. The king is the priest. And the priest is the king. Complete authority over this earth. Complete authority. That's why the third temple is so important. Uh, okay. Any comments? I'm looking forward to hearing about that temple being It's happening. Pull it up and read some stuff. Just type it in. That's all you gotta do. Third temple. <coughs> now, they uh, they say that all the plans are done, all the material's ready. Of course, the Dome of the Rock, they say, some dispute it, some say it's another place, but uh, they say the Dome of the Rock is sitting on that spot. So what does that tell you? You know, there's a problem there. It's cool. We're going to see something happen. But that treaty that they signed, there's a seven-year treaty that's going to be signed, and uh, may have something to do with it. I don't know. We'll see. I believe we're in that generation. I believe we are. Any other comments? Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy. All the other stuff happened. That's going to happen too. Amen. That's why we're here. Yeah. All right. Let's stand. We'll have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you again for your goodness to us, Lord, this group to come out here tonight. We pray, Father, you watch over us as we go home. And Father, that you bring us back again safely. Bless us, we pray, watch over us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.